So welcome to the RS podcast. Uh, I have you all to myself this evening without Rob being here. Um, I'm joined by my special guest, Patrick James O'Hare, as he's called on IMDb. Yeah. Uh, producer, director... Um, not director. Not director, I think you were the director. Producer and creator. Producer and creator. Yeah. Oh, yeah that's even better. <laughs> uh, musician, as I recall. Uh, that's right. Autograph collector. Yes. Uh, huge Star Wars and Harrison Ford fan. That's right. Um, so firstly, we we need to address the T-shirt. Because yes, okay. We have Finding Ford. Now, I really didn't know it was missing. I know that we've got like Lord Lucan, Jimmy Hoffa... <laughs> Uh, Madeline McCann, yes, no, all missing, but all um, missing, not for, not Ford. Uh, have we? Uh, 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 is this breaking news? Are we? Uh, <laughs> do we have to find him somewhere? Well, I did find him uh, in was it July two thousand one, two thousand twenty one. Sorry, twenty twenty one uh, on the set of Indiana Jones five. So Ooh. I did find him. Um, we actually didn't realize. Um, sort of how soon in we would find Ford. It was like the idea was that, you know, it was kind of we work our way up the cast list of finding, speaking to people who work with him, producers, and then hopefully going, oh, look, we're nearly at Lucas, we're nearly at Spielberg, and then we'll get him at the very end kind of thing. Um, but we just sort of happened upon him. And this uh, is for your documentary, which you're currently working on. That's right, Finding Ford. One man's journey to find his hero. <laughs> but it's not just about... It's not just about Harrison Ford himself. Uh, it's, no. it's about the people you've met along the way. Yeah. Um, and you've made some great friends out of it as well, because oh, wow. I've, I've met a few of those, because when we were at Celebration yeah. earlier this year. Um, yeah. Well, let's touch on that anyway, yeah. uh, Celebration, because um, a lot of people seem to have said it, and I know you guys mentioned it on your, on the podcast, because I'd kind of, I've watched a few of them and stuff. Right. Um you know, you were saying it's, it was mainly about the people, Star Wars Celebration, yeah. and, it, and it really was. It was like, I mean, obviously there's there's the panels and all that. I got to see the Lucasfilm panel. I was hoping Harrison would turn up, but it was just a video message, you know, I'm working kind of thing, which was fair enough, But because um, he was doing Marvel, wasn't he? But um, certainly they're getting to hang out with everyone and getting to meet new friends and all that kind of stuff. Plus, we've known each other for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we hadn't really got to hang out and just no. have a beer and stuff like that. And that Boon to Eve thing, we just got to hang yeah, out. Yeah, that uh, was fun. And uh, <laughs> it was great. You were hanging out with the uh, the Paul Shipper twins. Yes, yes. Yeah. So he's a great example yeah. of, uh, you're a great example as well, um, of the fact that I wouldn't be friends with him or know him and stuff if I wasn't a Harrison Ford fan slash Star Wars fan slash Indiana Jones fan. So... That's certainly um, an element of uh, Finding Ford, the documentary, is um, kind of what a conduit he's been for friendships, discovering other things, other music, other directors, other mm. actors, um, but him being, you know, the main man, obviously, as well. So this is like a, a journey that you've basically taken and interviewed people that have worked with him, uh, anyone close to him or anything like that? Uh, we've not interviewed like, you know, family or friends or anything like that. I don't, I don't know if that would be that cool for him. No, no. It, it, <laughs> the it's family, almost, he's quite, quite a private, you he's know? <laughs> quite a private dude. I mean, there is, um, there's people from early in his career who are still around that I would be interested to speak to. Um, there's a guy called Fred Roos who was um, a casting director who kind of was one of the first to sort of discover him and he was the one who put him in the conversation and uh, Apocalypse Now, uh, sorry, um, American Graffiti and stuff like mm. that after he'd left the um, episodic TV and the Hollywood star system and all that stuff. He was the guy who kind of, I think, gave us Harrison Ford really. Mm. So he'd be a really interesting person to speak to. But what we've mostly... Sp um, who we've mostly spoken to so far is um, producers and actors, probably in actors generally in smaller parts. I mean, we, you know, we we spoke to uh, you know background artists and things like that, but you know, we sat and had a good few hours with Robert Watts, who obviously worked with mm. Harrison on you know six films, and so we had a lot of stories. Um, and then we've kind of it, it's all been a bit 
I mean, Robert was obviously a, a fully organised thing and we were sat in a nice hotel with him and all that kind of stuff. But a, a lot of it has been sort of smash and grab based around, you know, conventions and going, oh, can we speak to you? Or mm. And then going meeting them and things like that. And uh, like I, I really didn't think we were going to get Anthony Daniels, but, you know, we went to the full of sci-fi here in Manchester and uh, and asked him and... Um, after a little bit of cajoling, it was like, well, you can ask us a question in the Q&A. So it was like, oh, and can we film it? And he was like, yeah. So um, so we got a question to Anthony Daniels. So he's kind of like probably the biggest cast member we spoke to so far. Mm. Uh, we're in negotiations with agents for other people, um, but some of it's pretty tough. It's like, you know, a lot of making this film is... Uh, you know, pushing on doors and hoping that one of them's going to open eventually. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, that is the tricky thing about it. And, you know, obviously doing it on a certain amount of budget and kind of having to space that out between my schedule and their schedule and how much we've got to spend and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I love doing it, but it is frustratingly slow. And right. you just wish there was sort of somebody who would roll out a little carpet it every now and then and go yeah you should talk to these people you know what i mean yeah. whereas rather we're just going sort of yeah come and talk to us which you know? did you contact him down or um no you managed to get older, not yeah i'm gonna do that right i'm, I'm definitely gonna do that because uh, um, again last crusade he was on oh no, i love um, last crusade um we've he, he's got some interesting stories uh, yeah i look forward to speak to him we spoke to um dickie beer Obviously yeah. about about Last Crusade, he had yeah. a great some great stories there, um, and there's we are going to be speaking to Julian Glover, and um, hopefully we could speak to uh, Alison Doody as well if possible. Yeah, um, but yeah, I've got a big. I mean, it, I, I would like to give us a sort of wide sort of smattering of films across his career. Mm. Some of them obviously are trickier because they were shot in the States and a lot of those people are sort of US based. I mean, I would very much like to do an LA slash or New York, whatever trip mm. um, to actually get some of those people in person. We haven't technically done any, all of the interviews have been in person so far. Yeah. We've not technically done any kind of, uh, you know, down the pipe interviews, mm. but there are ways to do that. Um, you know, and make it look really good rather than a Zoom nowadays. There's, there's there's kind of new remote options and stuff that you can do. So that's something we would like to, that we may, that we may look at. But um, yeah, most of the stuff we've done so far has been like UK based or if the person is over from the States, we've managed to speak to them like Dickie and people like that, you know. I mean, Harrison's how old now? 80. 80. So, he, I mean, and in some of those films, he was quite i mean if you go back to his early career he was quite the younger member of cast yeah um, yeah so uh, as ever with these things you know these people are unfortunately they you know, are. disappearing yeah and it's 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 stories that are lost um so it's nice that you're doing this because it's, it's like from from my perspective of sorting the autographs out for the limited editions that we do yeah uh, I get to sit down and speak to some of the guys that have again worked with Harrison and again have worked with um, with George and stuff like that, and you get to hear some of the interesting stories that you know. And these, like I, I said this to to Lindsay Muir, um because she knows a lot of these guys um, yeah. with Brian. Yeah. And Brian's got two books out, and then he there's another book about the Stormtrooper, and then it's like, well, I said maybe you should do another book where, you know, you, you're taking down these stories that, that, that you hear that will we, that will be just lost. It's true, um, yeah. Uh, for instance, Jeremy Bullock. Uh, yeah. You know, s sadly, he went a couple of years ago now. Mm. Uh, and there are, there are times when I, I've spoke to him at conventions and stuff like that and heard stories from him. And, and again, they're just, you know, lost. Yeah, I mean... We are, I was conscious of that as well um, from a, you know, an important kind of historical point of view mm. is that, um, and what makes it, in, I mean, obviously it's it's about access and who you can actually speak to easily mm. to a certain extent, but it also felt quite important to document 
their stories as well because yeah. you would get a story from um you know an Alan Austin or from um you know a, a Shane Rimmer or a, a whoever um that you wouldn't get in any other film and like you say that these people are unfortunately are, are getting old and they're starting to die so these stories yeah. are lost um but also in general me obviously probably like yourself would like to buy your, you know, your Blu-rays and your DVDs and all that stuff. And when that stuff started to become available, mm. um, rather than like waiting for a Saturday afternoon, hoping that a making of documentary would come on ITV God, yeah, or something yeah. like that. You know? uh, Easter Sunday or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, they're making a Temple of Doom's going to be on. Awesome, <laughs> you know. Those were the only kind of snippets we would get yeah. or going into bookshops and hunting, second-hand bookshops to hunt down like, you know, the illustrated uh, Empire Strikes Back screenplay, whatever yeah. it was, all those great things. We had to hunt that information down. Now it's all, whoosh, it's, yeah, it's there. In front of you, yeah. Um, but, you know, it was, it, that felt like an important thing is is that you could you could get those stories um, which you wouldn't get in those documentaries you would have on like a DVD or whatever, a Blu-ray and stuff. Mm. So like generally on a making of film documentary, you would have, you know, you've got, let's say it's an Indiana Jones making of documentary. You'd have, you know, Stephen George, maybe John Williams, Harrison Ford, and probably what, the two leads? Mm. So like maybe a Harrison Ford, a Sean Connery, an Alison Doody and a Julian Glover. And yeah. then that's it. Anyone below there, you yeah, don't really yeah. hear their stories. No, that's true. So like yeah. you're not listening, you're not hearing from Vernon Dovchek who played the butler yeah. and what that scene originally was and that it was longer and, you know, Harrison hides him in a sarcophagus and things like that. You know, there's all these little things which, like you say, those stories are disappearing. So to have those, I think, is um, is really cool because, you know, Pe those aren't in documentaries, you know? Mm. And I think pe hopefully people are interested in that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. I think oh, I'm interested in it. Well, yeah, you know? I mean, it's like you say, it's, it's like this is something that, you know, it's, it's it's lost and these are these are always the interesting little stories that, you know, I, I, I certainly love it. I remember the first time I sat down with um, Anthony Forrest. Yeah. And just, you know, nothing to do with Star Wars, but just some of the things that he's done in his life. Yeah, he's a are muso just, as well, isn't he? And just, you know, incredible. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the guy at the time was, he was busking in uh, the subways in, in London. Yeah. And he was just doing it for fun. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, that's, you know, and he was actually, I think he must have been getting the, the, the train up from, because he lived on the South Coast at the time, I think. So he was right. getting the train up to London. He had a pass, because you have to have like a special pass. To, that's right, yeah, yeah. To, busk in, in London and he was just doing it because he loved music and he loved you know performing yeah um you know these strange little stories like that and um, so I mean getting back to Harrison and so top three movies <laughs> well uh, well on the spot well t it's it's funny really because I, and I would say it's not really by design mm. I don't think but you know my top three movies do a whole star Harrison Ford, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of, it's just the way it is. I think so. Number one's Blade Runner. Yeah. Great film. Uh, number two is Empire Strikes Back. Number three is Raised Lost Art. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they are, they are, they are his blockbusters as well. And, and even having to, even having to choose between whether to put in your yeah. Star Wars first I'm still hating myself for just saying it out loud now, but like I, I've got to go somewhere. You know, yeah, I know yeah. that Star Wars was my first thing, so it's got to be up there. Yeah. But Blade Runner was a strange uh, experience because obviously I was, you know, I was kind of raised on Star Wars and Indiana Jones. Um, and I've talked about this before, but the first time I watched Blade Runner on like VHS or whatever, I was just like, Ugh, I hate this. <laughs> Didn't like it at all. And then. Yeah, but, but so which which is your preferred version of Blade Runner? The final cut. The final cut. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh no. I mean <laughs> I, I I I was, you know, I, I spent a lot of time watching the theatrical cut. Yeah. I d I think the happy ending should definitely have gone. I don't think it makes any sense. Like yeah. that's fine. Um they needed to put the unicorn back in for the It's too bad you won't live, but then again, who does at the end, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. That needed to be in there. 
But the final cut, I mean, I think it tidied up a lot of the opticals and things that kind of needed to be done. Um, looking at it now, some of the fixes, like, you know, effects-wise may look a tiny bit dated, like the the um, Joanna Cassidy thing, but it certainly looked better than the, mm. like, the stunt woman in the dodgy wig and stuff like oh, that. Well, yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and fairly, even more recently, it was like last year I got my hand, like, I don't know if you're big into that. I, I'm a bit of a nerd about the 3D TV thing. Like, right. when 3D TV came about, yeah. like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, for an 80s kid, like, to have a 3D TV in your house was just blew my mind, okay? <laughs> and, like, my brother-in-law got one first and was like, yeah, you know, you put the glass on. I was like, how is this possible? It was like Back to the Future. I was waiting for him to to come out with, like, a, a video phone on his watch, and so, which, which we've got now. Yeah, anyway, yeah. it's all there, isn't it? Yeah. But the, particularly the 3D thing blew my mind. So I wanted one for a very long time, and, and I was, you know, and they were quite expensive, and I waited a long time. And I got a kind of cheap one, um, just the HD one. Mm. Um, and I hammered that and that was great. But then I found, I was like, I'd kind of bought 4K discs <laughs> of, of a few things yeah, yeah. just to go, I, I've just got to have it. I, I can't even watch it. Like, you know, yeah, I'd got yeah. like Apocalypse Now and things like that, the 4K and stuff because it had the Blu-rays in as well. Mm. But So I was like, well, I'm going to get to it eventually, you know? And um, so a while ago, uh, last year, I discovered that there was a very narrow sort of period mm. where they made 3D TVs that were 4K at the same two. Okay, and they only yeah, did it for about yeah. two or three years. Yeah. It's all super old tech now. Yeah. So I picked up like a second hand 2013 TV and it's big. Yeah. Um, weighs a ton. Yeah. It took me and the other guy to get it into the back of it, completely filled my back of my truck. Like, um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so you could, so it's achievable. So I was like, right, so if I then get a 3D Blu ray player that's like 4K upscaler and put the 3D Blu rays in, honest to God, it's incredible. Like, I was just, <laughs> I, I was like, just sat there like, oh, this is the best thing ever. So there's a couple of 3D, th you know, Blade Runner 2049, mm. I've got on 3D, and that's just, you know, even The Force Awakens, like, the, you know, the, the, when Ray jumps in the Millennium Falcon and all that. Oh, yeah, That yeah. sequence in 3D is just mind-blowing. Whatever you think about the movie and stuff, and seeing Harrison Ford in 3D, like, as Han Solo, I was just like, this is awesome. <laughs> um, so it's great. But for the because of that, I was like, well, Blade Runner's in 4K, mm. and obviously the final cut. I, when I got hold of the, the 4K disc of that, I'd only seen it on, you know, I'd seen it on VHS, DVD. This is what collecting is, guys. You know, well, it's it buying is, yeah, the things yeah. you love over and over and over again. <laughs> Very. You know, we'll be back for 8K. We will. Do you know what I mean? It's going to happen. But um, I stuck that 4K Blade Runner in. Yeah. It was like a religious experience. <laughs> it was like <laughs> I'm sat there on my own watching the, you know, the chimneys explode in the opening sequence, just yeah, weeping yeah. like a child. It was beautiful, man. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so yeah, the, you know, seeing that in 4K, I mean, it's just perfect. So tell me what... Do you prefer the theatrical cut, director's I cut? I do. I do prefer the... Um, the voiceover. Yeah, the voiceover. I think it's because it's the one I grew up with. Yeah. And, to, you know, for me, you know, Star Wars, Empire, Blade Runner, it was like, oh, it's got Harrison Ford in it. You know, so it was like, oh, I've got to watch this. Yeah. And I remember staying up late to watch it because it's not a, a kid's film, really. No, it's no. It's film noir. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... Yeah, and then staying up late to watch it, and and then sort of not really understanding it, but yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I yeah. loved, all, loved all the neon, the rain, and everything like yeah. that, and it was just incredible. Yeah, and um, so, so yeah, I mean the the whole Philip Marlowe style uh, narration. They don't adver advertise for killers in a newspaper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, great. I loved I loved that, and yeah, I suppose that's what makes it special for me. It's, down to the sort of nostalgia aspect. Yeah, I think, like, it's funny because I think even now when I watch, like, either I'd watch the director's cut first or the final cut or whatever, mm. I think in my head I can still hear where the, the where it's all the voiceover bits are because yeah. I knew it, so, you know, I knew it. But I think 
some of the bits are great and it gives it that Marlowe thing, but some of them are just like, uh, it's like, you yeah, know, yeah. on the nose. I think, um, what's his name? Who is it who had a crack at writing the Indie 4 cri- script that didn't get made? Uh, Darabont. Right. Frank Darabont. He talks about it in the uh, Dangerous Days Blade Runner documentary yes. saying like, uh, you know, the, the moment, de- uh, you know, uh, Batty dies, Rutger Hauer, and it's like, da, da, da. And he goes, I don't know why he saved my life. He's like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the most touching moment in yeah, the whole you've film. Just, you've just like, said, I yeah. don't need you to explain maybe you love life more than he ever had before. You know, it's like, thank you. We don't yeah. need that. So some of it's a bit on the nose. Um, yeah, yeah. But it's that thing of, I think it was the start, wasn't it, of the studios kind of listening to test audiences and going, mm. we need to do this. Well, there were so many script problems with it as well from the oh yeah from the original you know the the book is it's um you'll be able to tell me I can't Philip remember. K Dick Philip K Dick do androids dream of electric yeah, sheep yeah. yeah yeah I knew there was sheep in there somewhere yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's always sheep in there somewhere <laughs> so yeah um I I yeah I I, rem- I remember it uh, I think it is on dangerous days how they basically go through and there's been so many changes. Yes, um, yeah. From what the original book was to what actually was oh, made yeah. on screen. Yeah. Um, but there are so many other films like that. I mean, you know, Spielberg is, is you know, I, I recently read Jaws. Uh, and the, that oh, is yeah. so completely different from She has an affair actual, with uh, Hooper and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, it's weird. I mean, there is things you have to pull out, isn't there? And, and then... You know, obviously, then there's things for budgetary reasons that mm. come out and things like that. Like I can totally identify with that. Um, you know, but I think one of the other things, and and I don't want to be like, I don't want to be all old guy about special effects and stuff like that because you'll probably be in the same boat as me. But <laughs> park our cars in the same garage, kind of thing. But like this, what people have talked about previously about CGI and stuff like that is that it's great. You know, and you can do anything. But sometimes that's why it's not always so great. Because back in the day, there was, you know, limits to what you were able to achieve mm. uh, using stop motion, using uh, matte paintings, using whatever it, whatever beautiful thing it was that they were using at the time. Yeah. Blue yeah. screen and stuff. Now, if they hit that limitation, they would then often have to creatively think of a solution to what they could do instead of what they were going to do or which what is, they wanted to do. Which is pretty much what we've got with Star Wars because it's, yeah. it's it's at every, every point there's innovation um, yeah, yeah. Within, within that the original trilogy because there's things that, they, you know, we've all seen that, that, that footage of the camera running along the car park yeah, with yeah, the yeah, yeah. Uh, the trench run and the explosions there, yeah. you know, it's like how right here's the problem. Yeah, how do we solve it? Exactly, and everything in between. But I think the thing was as well is that often those creative solutions for the problem mm. created something more interesting. Yeah, yeah. Than we want to do this, we can just do it. Well, so you know. I mean, with Industrial Lights and Magic, when the, the, the obviously the first Jurassic Park and then doing mm. the dinosaurs on that, and that's when Lucas turned around and went, right, now I can, I can actually Wars. do yeah. some other stuff in Star Wars. Mm, maybe not the best, <laughs> but he did it anyway. Yeah. Uh, and I know people that are just like, no, it's got to be the original cut and all this and the other of, you know, Star Wars, of, of all three of the Hard to do now. trilogy. Without those white boxes around the ships <laughs> yeah yeah that's it, yeah <laughs> although there's there's there's, a, there's guys doing those despecialized things on i've not seen any of them yet i kind of like to think i've seen i did i i've seen two different versions mm. of um empire on um, one of them it's just like they've done the despecialized mm. and changed it back to what it was as far as the cut is concerned yeah yeah but then they've added like TIE fighters in the Hoth scene and stuff like that. And really? Yeah. It was, it was, oh, it no, was an no, odd no. one, I'd say. No, I was no. like, what? this is just, yeah. Well, somebody so was there's telling more me- ships and everything like that and more, ba- more, ba- more, more lasers going on. <laughs> yeah. No, was, no. You know. Somebody was telling me last night that uh, they've, they've dropped, um, well, because 
today is it's kind of weird that made today, isn't it? Because it's 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi today. Yes. So that's kind of cool being yeah. in uh, RS Prop Monsters on that day. Yeah. Um, yeah. Apparently they dropped like the third version of the Return of the Jedi D Special Edition okay. yesterday. Right. So ah. maybe I'll get around that's, to watching uh, it. Yeah. Point. Just to try and find that one. Yeah. I'm not sure how you do it, but. Um, they're not allowed to sell it, are they? That's no, the thing. no, but there'll probably be a just, link on Facebook or something. It just gets passed like around, that. doesn't it? Kind That's of thing. It. So. Yeah, they always do. Yeah. 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 So um, let's sort of skip forward to, I mean, obviously back to finding Ford. Yeah, yeah. Um, so is there anything you want to give away about, um, you know, meeting Harrison Ford or how are we going to meet Harrison <laughs> Ford? Um, I can't really give away. It, we, we, there was like a brief exchange, which I can't give away because no, that's that's, just, that's, that's that's the ending of your documentary, isn't it? So that's 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 the ending, um, unless, or I should say, until we meet him again. So if we do meet him again, then that's a great start, and there's going to be a different finish, you know. If we don't meet him again, then it's for sure the ending. So the, is the plan to to try and sit down with him and have a conversation? That's or? what I'd like to do. Yeah. Yeah. Even, uh, even if it's not a sit down, even if it's just like, you know, in a press junket somewhere. Yeah. And you get to ask a question and I kind of just at least say, first I want to say thanks yeah. for X and X and X and X and X. And here's the question. Because, you know, and this is what I talk about, you know, what I was talking about, about pushing on doors and yeah. for some of them to open. Like to be in those kind of rooms is kind of, is kind of a difficult thing, I think, you know. Um, if you're not technically press, mm. uh, I suppose, uh, and you've not, you know, you're not working for BBC or RDV or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that if people like me or whatever were given the opportunity, like at the end of the day, like I've been studying the dude for forty years. Mm. You know, I've probably heard him ask every be ask sorry answer every question. Mm that he's ever going to be asked. And you can tell the ones that he covers it well, but you can sort of read the ones that he's bored shitless of answering. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. or, you know, the ones that the inexperienced, like, journalist will go, oh, what's your favourite of all your... Fil-? Like, it's the worst question. Yeah. They hate that. Actors hate that question. Because mm. they'll always just go, oh, the latest one. You know, or whatever. Well, of course they got they got to the promoting. Yeah, it, exactly. So, yeah, <laughs> the one I've just done is my favorite. But the, you know, so people of like my experience, you know, I think could probably craft an interesting question for him in one of those situations that he might go, "Oh, that's a good question." But that's it. I mean, it's like as if he was here now, um, and he was promoting uh, the Indy Five. Mm. I mean, the press are in and out the door all day, yeah. and they're all asking the same questions. Yeah, yeah, that's everything. it exactly. So it, it, there has to be a point where they just slump back in the chair and they go, oh, "That's oh, it. Yeah. I've had enough now." Yeah, 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 enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you don't, you can't blame them for that. No, no. I not mean, at it's, all. I, like I say, when whenever I've done interviews with like Julian Glover and and some of the other. Uh, Star Wars characters, I always try and find something that's, I always like to, to speak about their career and about how they got into it. Yeah, yeah. And then and then sort of see what goes sort of through what they've their favourites are, because they, they've always got a favourite, but yeah, let them lead you to that rather than, yeah. you know, you just asking what's your favourite film. Yeah, you know? I do, f- you do find that, because I've, I, I always like to ask about that as well, like, because I've hosted you know, Q and A's at conventions mm. and things like that. And generally when you ask them like, you know, what was it a play? Was it a certain actor? Was it, what was it? that? Mm. What was the spark that got you to want to be able <laughs> want to do this? Yeah. Yeah. They're away for 25 minutes. Oh God. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? That's it. Yeah. That's just that thing. Yeah. Because you, you're giving them rope to, you know, mm. room to kind of go, well, you know, oh, well, what was it? And, you know, well, it all started here, you know. Well, that's it. A I long mean, time ago. That was the first you know. thing we, uh, like I asked Dennis Lawson, and I don't think he was quite expecting it, really, because we were sat down with him, and it was like, 
So he's waiting how for did, like. How did it all start so for wedge. you? So wedge. <laughs> yeah. Talk yeah. about wedge. I wasn't, I wasn't yeah. really, you know, it, it, of course, yeah. you know, we all loved, you know, Star Wars and how they got, got into it. And, and the, the best one is that, did you think it would be as big a hit as it was? Most of them are like, no. Yeah. But again, sort of starting the conversation with, um, with Dennis was like, uh, so uh, where did it all start for you? And he was like, oh, right, okay. And, it, and then he started explaining it about how we'd done sort of, um, lots of stage plays and stuff like that. And when he actually started to then, um, you know, do it seriously, and yeah. he was telling us about he was just sharing a flat with Ian McDermott and stuff like that. <laughs> the, 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 it's 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 on YouTube. Watch it. It's it's a really good interview. And it's, so I really Wedge and Palpy it. having a yeah, you know, living it, together. That's it. Yeah, it, it, that's it's, a whole other film. <laughs> yeah. Like the, the young ones, Star Wars style. I want to see that. I really want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Palpy. <laughs> Did you get any bacon this weekend? <laughs> no. No. I got spam. <laughs> yeah. I want to see that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the great thing about, you know, being in the position that we're in, sort of thing, that we, we get to, you know, meet these guys and that. Yeah. Um, oh, it's brilliant. Um, you know, it's brilliant, that part of it. And like you say, is, is hearing the stories that, you know, yeah, nobody's... Nobody, nobody's... Well, if we didn't have asked the questions and had YouTube and stuff like that, then, you know, these again, these things would have been lost. Yeah, um, yeah. That's it, exactly, yeah. So uh, have we got a release date for uh, mm. Finding Ford? Not really. I mean, we've got quite a lot of material now. Mm. Um you know, before probably about twelve months ago, Steve was quite Steve the Pilling, the director of the film, mm. uh, was quite fond of saying, "You know, we're about a third in, but I think we're, we're I think there's quite a bit more than that now." Right. Um, but there is things I want to do. Like I say, um, I would like to get Harrison again if I can. Mm. There's a few people that I would really like to tick off the list, um, including a bit of traveling, possibly. Mm. Um, you know, I'd love to go and kind of do a frantic sort of trip really? in Paris. And it's because a few of these French actors that were in that still around and things yeah. like that. And Polanski's still there. And so his missus who were yeah. in it. So that'd be cool to kind of do a European sort of thing. Yeah. And if I could get to do LA, I mean, yeah. Be uh, I mean, uh, I, a couple of years ago now, I was, uh, I went on a, on a trip to LA. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, while I'm there, I'm going to, airbnb it and uh stay in downtown yeah uh and the whole literally about apart from a couple of meetings that i'd had out there um the whole trip was uh literally just you know location hunting yeah that's where they so, shot that <laughs> yeah so it was like um the bradby building um, i want to go there so the, i want to go there yeah uh, the frank lloyd wright house which was really weird because the uber driver <laughs> Uh, just took me there, dropped me off. I stood there for like 10 minutes taking pictures and then the same Uber driver came and picked me up and he was like, didn't I just drop you off here? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And then obviously the, uh, the the train station, is it, is it Grand, I can't remember is it, what it's called. Yeah, I can't remember. It's not, it's not it's Grand Central Station. It's not Grand, it? no, Grand no. Central is New York, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 I've but been it's there. A, it's a similar, yeah. A, but it's like, it's, that was really weird as well because it was like you, you're walking, because I was, I was I just walking through town um, and then you get to the end and there's just a signpost and it's it's like a new bit. It's like all, all right. you know, and then he said, I'm, I'm looking for the old part of the station. It's like, yeah. oh, right, it's down there. Yeah. And there's like this, this people on carts like golf carts because it's yeah, that yeah, long yeah. this yeah. thing <laughs> and it, it's like you gotta go right to the other end it's like all oh, right okay oh, yeah. so I just walks all the way down there and, it, and, then, and then you suddenly in the, the grandeur of the old yeah uh of the old station itself and it's just like oh yeah we've not done a huge amount of kind of set visity stuff mm. um either um which would be cool but there's like you know as you've alluded to there's a whole other sort of parts of the documentary is, uh, along with, you know, just the talking um, to people who've worked with him. Obviously there's fans yeah. and stuff. And then there's kind of, you know, it's about me as well, really. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. So there's that stuff in there. Um, so 
kind of once we've got a few more of the bits that I would really like to do, mm. you know, then then we'll then we'll be tackling the the edit and the edit and how how you're gonna and, how uh, the journey's gonna take it. And we've got a composer, you know, we've got the scores that uh, nice. Andrew Barrowclough, our composer, we've got that. Um, he's written, you know, we've already got Finding Ford theme and all this kind of stuff. Like, and the, and the music's awesome; it's yeah. really good. So, put getting to see all the elements put together mm. um, would be great. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, but I'm hopeful that in an ideal world, I'd like to kind of have wrapped up shooting by the end of this year and then yeah, sort of start yeah. tackling it. Yeah. Whether it'll work out that way, I don't know. But. I mean, you, you you really want it to sort of be, I mean, while he's still around. I mean, he's, I like to say, he's yeah, 80 yeah. odd. Yeah, he's, yeah. you know. Um, Super busy though. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. mental, I yeah. mean. And he's, I mean, if he's, you know, he's only just finished rapping on Indy 5. Uh, he's already he's done two TV shows. Still doing, you know, and you say he was doing Marvel. Yeah, so he, he rapped on Indiana Jones and went pretty much straight into, what, the 1923... Um, right. The Yellowstone show series, okay, yeah. Um, Shrinking on Apple Plus, Apple right. TV Plus, which is like a, a comedy, black comedy thing that he's doing. I um, seen, yeah, I think I've seen that. I've they're both it. great. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, he didn't make uh, Luke, the Lucasfilm thing because he was shooting. He's in Captain America: New World Order, ah. so he's taken over as Thunderbolt Ross from. Uh, not Redford. Oh, um, uh, yeah, William General Ross from Hurt. William Hurt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's taken over the role. Yeah, he sadly died, what, last year, was it something like that? Yeah. He did, yeah. It's funny as well because, I mean, this completely unrelated, but um, the only time Harrison Ford was ever nominating for an Oscar was for a Witness right, in 1984. Yeah. yeah. And he was beaten by William Hurt. Ah. So it's kind of weird that he's... Uh, Great film, a... great film witness. I, like, oh, I enjoyed yeah, witness. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. I mean, yeah. one of my favourites again is Mosquito Coast. Oh, um, yeah. I think that's one Ali of his Fox. strongest strongest performances because he's he's mm. he he almost he, he almost wants to become godlike in in that in by meeting these tribes and stuff in the yeah, you know, yeah. South American jungle and that um, Civil civilizing them. Yeah, and that huge with like, ice with ice, yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> yeah. trying to take it to them and then getting there, and it's just like wet leaves. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's a great film. And, and I'm not really doing that justice because it is a really good film. And yeah. if, if you haven't seen it, you know, you should watch it. Well, they're both directed by Peter Weir, mm. weren't they? They did, did, did two with him back to back. Yeah, and uh, yeah. they both uh, the scores were r both written by. Um, Maurice Jarre, right, father of Jean Michel. Oh, you really do know your fourth uh, stuff, uh, don't uh, you? <laughs> <laughs> I can't compete. Uh, so, and, but um, but again, um, you know, I think it's one of the most important films to him, actually, as well. Mm. I think it was a, uh, it's a big. I think even now, I think he still thinks of that fondly. Yeah. Plus, it was nice to see him, him and Helen Mirren get back together for the first time since Mosquito Coast in uh, 1923. Right. But it's long overdue some kind of um, Blu-ray, 4K yeah, remaster definitely. release. It's not, I think you can still only get a DVD. Well, this is it. I looked for it the uh, other day because I, I was talking to you and I was saying, you know, yeah. sort of before this interview, I wanted to, you know, see some of his, his stuff that I hadn't seen in years. Go and, back into and, and just sort of, and I always remember Mosquito Coast fondly. Yeah. Um, from what from when I watched it because of his, could because of Harrison's performance. Yeah. And it's unlike anything he'd, he'd done, really. Yeah, I think it is. It, re it really is. It's kind of manic. And but you see, a lot of his other performances, they can be very similar. You know, how, uh, you know, he'll be a detective or, you know, president, you know, Hero get type. off my plane. Yeah. Um, you know, those sort of sort of main characters. Uh, and that one really was it out, is a stand out there. It is a standout. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so, getting back to again to finding Ford, and um, so what? What are we hoping for at the end of this? Is it a cinema release or a? Yeah, yeah, yeah. An independent cinema release for finding Ford. I think so. I think so. And uh, you know, unless kind of Netflix or whoever wants to go, here's a load of money. You know, <laughs> <laughs> then we'll go thanks. Um, but no, I, I mean, 
Yeah, possibly independent. Sundance um, Festival or Cannes all, or of like that. That. all of that. All of that. All of that, all of that yeah. would be brilliant. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's kind of a funny thing that, I mean, uh, people say everyone's got a story in them, don't they? So, mm. you know, this one was, was mine for sure. And um, it will be nice to to birth it and get it out in any way. Mm. I, I would like as many people to see it as possible because yeah, I think it is a, a fun, interesting story. And it, I'm already getting my health getting ahead of myself and the thought of a sequel and everything so <laughs> which it can't be revealed just yet but um you know it's something i think if we can get through it and get to the finish line and yeah. get it delivered in whichever way that that is um you know i think it's something i would like to to do yeah um again really um hopefully a bit easier this time. <laughs> I think once you put one out there, yeah, you know, people yeah. see it and hopefully it's well received, you know, yeah. then it might, you know, it might be kind of like, oh, hello, lads, come in, you know, like the Beatles after they've recorded one track, you know. <laughs> oh, it's quite good. Oh, it's you right, come, right. Yeah, 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 you know. Do you want to do this one? Yeah. Not yeah. with the Beatles or anything, no. um, but um, <laughs> <laughs> smiling's the only thing we rehearse. But um, <laughs> yeah, that, you know, it's it's fun. Yeah. Hard work, but it's fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll just have to see what happens. I mean, uh stay tuned. Yeah. You can you can check out obviously findingford.com and we are just at finding forward on whatever platform you can throw it at. You know, Fantastic. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're even be great chatting with you. Thank you very much, Sam. I think uh that's it for this one. Um Join us again soon.